2024, government, uh, Canadian government will increase the capital gains tax inclusion rate from 50% to 66.67% on property and investment gains. How fun is that? It sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. People have actually panic sold from this. Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Reality Check, where we discuss what's happening in Toronto's real estate market, where, where it's, it's going, going and how you make, make informed decisions, buying and selling. And since there hasn't been much change, so we're gonna conclude the episode. Thank you, thanks for watching, <laughs> see you next time. So what's going on in today's episode, Devi? Not much, a little bit of up, a little bit of down, all around. All around, I More thought- More or less. I actually thought back in January we would be like going crazy in April and May. You know what's crazy is our predictions were wrong. It wasn't wrong. It was like going that way because February well, yeah. was nuts. I was basing myself on the interest rates, truth be told. Yeah. And then when things, you know, I think they like dangle a carrot like in front of us where they're like, oh, it's going to go down. It's going to go down. And then the week before, every week study, yeah. they're like, oh, no, sorry, we can't do it. Yeah, It's like a tease. Well, we're going to get to that, but do you think, let's not even go there for interest rate. We'll discuss the interest rates after, yeah. but let's talk about the fact that, I mean, February things heated up. I remember we had a couple of listings. And like, March. Yeah, March and was good too. March was good too, but March, we had a weird March because of the fact that, you know, we had a good Friday in March. Yeah. And, and the we had the spring break. The spring break, everything. But despite but April, that, March was still not so bad. It wasn't that Two bad, months yeah. of inventory across the board on yeah. most uh, areas, not so bad at all. By the way, I might be sneezing here and there. That's okay. So, but you're right. But what happened in April when was am I not? <laughs> what happened in April was um, really weird because everything was going well till the uh, budget news was came released, out. Was released, yeah. And I for sure was shocked because I think you were the first person that told me, "Hey, listen, did you hear capital gain tax going up?" Yeah, like, yeah that's a joke. And then I, I actually the thought it was like, you know, fake news because there's a lot of that going around. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah. Dun, like, dun, dun. Yeah. Did not see that one coming. But because of that, which is weird. And I remember yeah. us talking about it because I said it very clearly. I said things will heat up unless they do something, something crazy. Drastic. Yeah. Well, that and happened. they did that crazy thing because that messes with people's mentality. We I have agree. buyers right now that again we're educating them so that they don't make this mistake of sitting on the sideline because you are finding deals we're seeing properties that were getting multiple offers back in february yeah like one of them that had like 18 offers now only got four offers and things should be the same i mean interest rates are the same the only thing changed yeah. is the mentality. perception and the buyer mentality mm -hmm. so i feel like it's the momentum too though yeah you know the momentum has slowed down a bit and it directly translates yeah I mean, where are people living these days? I don't know. That's a good question. They should be buying it. Any, anyways, but here's the interesting <laughs> thing. Where are people living these days? <laughs> God. So the interesting thing is um, one thing that was shocking last April. April. Do you remember last April? Last April, things were actually busier last February, March. And then no, April, things were like... April, no, April and good. May, things were like really yeah. hot. I remember like... Um, but it started last February because it was February, March. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, June, let's, June let's look like, at the stats for that. Yeah. Last April, we had 1.38 months of inventory, right? And I remember May, things got crazy. And then June, July, they increased the rates. And then that's it. Everything kind of stopped right after yeah. then. And since then, we've been just... Steady. You know, just been steady. But one thing worth mentioning is how much more supply we have this April compared to last April. So, yeah. last April, we had... We do have good transaction volume too, though. Yeah, we, we do, but so, but like the number of active listings have gone up drastically. I agree. So yeah. Last year we had ten thousand three hundred active listings in April. Mm -hmm. This year, eighteen thousand, over eighteen thousand. So that's seventy five percent more homes up for sale. We had said and predicted last December, which was that a few months ago, a lot of listings that people that were waiting and waiting for the March you know, the spring market, we're going to flood the market. And I guess that really did happen. Because a lot of people took their uh, listings off the market in November, December, yes. especially, and uh, no one really brought it on the market. And I remember telling a few of our clients that were waiting for yeah. March and April, less than February, we don't have inventory, put it on the market. And yeah. that's why... Those uh, properties did move. Very well, very well. And now the good ones are going and the bad ones are like 30, yeah. 40 days on the market. Yeah. So, I mean, 
just before getting into the market watch so right now we have 75 percent more list active listings and because of that we have over two and a half months of inventory because month of inventory was going pretty uh going below two percent yeah, quite low and suddenly in april I and mean, god knows if it was the news or whatever Who it knows? was it went up so let's get into market watch so i'm gonna say it's the news though i think because it what news. else could it be all other things remain Clear, the same. It could be because of us away. Maybe. That I was too. away for a good nine days. Yeah. Nine. <laughs> Cut it short. Nine long days. <laughs> nine long days. But so let's go ahead, get into the market watch. So number of sales, 7,114 homes. And I just want to put that in perspective. So last April, when things were really heated, we had just over 7,500 sales. But... I'm trying to follow along. Go for yeah. it. Take 7, it away. 500 sales. Yeah. But we only had 10,300 homes available. Now, this month, what we have is a, over 18,000 homes and less number of sales. So yeah. this is why the active uh, so month of inventory has gone up. And this is why we see more options available. Not a lot of multiple offers. Yeah. And uh, Well, let's the, just talk about it. Multiple offers are not really happening like downtown. Anything that's downtown is yeah. having a hard time right now. Well, we're talking and, about condos, and I'm guessing. Mostly condos, yeah. but even Everything, houses. Yeah. Even houses. Whereas if you go like literally just jump skip to North York, you feel like the multiple offers are happening a little bit more and working a little bit more effectively. Yeah. In detached. Yes. And, and semis. And, and freeholds. So yes, freeholds. Sure. Exactly. So with that being said, because of the months of inventory rising, yeah. we don't see much price appreciation so i mean uh, we're right now at sitting at just over one million one hundred and fifty six thousand in we're terms of uh, average types. pricing yeah. and uh you know it's slightly up from last month but you know if things were going the way it was going let's say back in march and the inventory wasn't as high i think things could have gone up to 1.2 yeah i but agree with that being said, the months of inventory is 2.4 and average days on the market has actually come down to 19 days. What do you think that is? I guess people are like pricing them right. So they're selling. I guess, yeah. Yeah. So I also feel like there are slightly more buyers getting off of their butts to kind of make a little bit more decisions. Uh, whereas people were taking forever to make the decisions, people right. feel a little bit more inclined to start pulling the trigger. Um, but that being said, people that are not thinking of buying, they're not going to be stimulated to buy. Perfect. It's either you are or you're not, right? So let's talk about two things. Yeah. Right now. Let's focus on buyers in this market. Let's focus on sellers in this market. Yeah. If you are a seller in this market and you see these stats, what are the strategies you got to use in order to be the next sale out? You know, it's funny you say that because it doesn't really matter what market you're in. Even if you're in the hottest market, you got to be the best price and the best looking. At the end of the day, that's what it takes to sell a home. Bad market, good market. That really is what sets you apart, right? And then obviously your marketing, like you want to do good marketing. But regardless, it doesn't matter. You just need to have a good price and you need to look the best. Exactly. And in terms of looking the best, things that needs to be done. Um, we always talk about looking at a lot of appeal. people. Yeah, a lot of people think about just staging. It's not just no. the staging. It's how you're the outside of the house. Even looks. staging outside yeah. goes such a long way. Yeah, like the patio furniture. Yeah, key. it's you're selling lifestyle yeah. at the end of the day. Outside of a house, just being clean. Your uh, front lawn being all Trimmed, manicured, everything. Trimmed. Yeah, uh, you don't have you know dead leaves sitting aside. Um, that is really key. I go to home sometimes. First impression. Like, yeah, lasting. We go to listings. Um, here and there that you know you open the door the foyer is all a mess clearly no one's cleaned that house since they put it on even the just having shoes laying around when i open a door myself i'm like ugh, and i see homes all day so i can't imagine what the buyer behind me is thinking yeah. when we're walking in a house just puts a bad uh, taste in uh, buyer's um mentality in terms Agreed. of just you know looking at a house that's like that so they start to think, okay, you know what? This house is neglected. You know, yeah. it just gives a bad vibe up. And keep really in does. mind, this is really key to consider. This is stats. Um, 12 seconds, that's all it takes for a buyer to decide if they like the house or not. So within the first 12 seconds, if you're looking at a detached house, you're pretty much in the main floor. So your living room, family room, dining room, kitchen, foyer, kitchen is going to be... You can see it? 
immaculate. It's yeah. got to smell good. Yeah. And uh, big time. All the senses. I personally haven't had anyone say, hey, listen, you know what? The second bedroom was not good. I didn't Or like too it. Small. So, yeah, yeah I'm not gonna buy it. Realistically, if they like the main floor, they like the master, most likely, you know, almost 80% of the situation is solved. Agreed. Um, so, so yeah, you gotta be well priced. You gotta, you know, yeah. the aesthetic is important because people are, are clicking and the pictures have to look good. Yeah. So that's for the sellers. For the sellers, yeah. And for the buyers, if you're buying in this market. What are you looking you for? The, yeah, you see these stats like yeah. this. You see 18,000 active listing. Month of inventory is like two and a half months, which is, again, it's technically a seller's market It's still market healthy, still. though. Yeah, but if you are going out there to buy. Yeah. But again, like... I, I, I like, look at these numbers. If I'm a buyer, I, I don't know these numbers off the top yeah. of my head. So my realtor is sharing these facts with me. And they're not isolating the numbers. They're helping me understand that, listen, there's 18,000 listings right now, which means you have options. Let's go out and shop. And then there's strategies to secure, depending on what's going to fit, you know, what you're looking for. If you're looking for a hot deal, there are strategies to achieve the best deal, given the 18,000. If you're looking for something, you know, that you're going to move into, well, guess what? Now you have even more options and you can be a little pickier with, having a bigger family room or sizable bedrooms, whatever yeah. the case may be, because you're a little bit more in control. There's more inventory, there's more yeah. options. So that's the exact answer that you know, I was looking for. Oh, that for. you were looking for? Yeah, good. so that's- Nailed it. <laughs> that's really good, but yeah. also you got to consider- How much of it is selling though? Yeah. So you got to also look at what type of uh, property you're looking at, mm -hmm. and that'll also determine, you know, what kind of strategy you should pick. Because if you're, yeah. let's say, looking at a semi-detached in beaches, well, listen, that's going to be hot. You know, hot you got to be pre-approved. You probably got to go. do your uh, inspection and financing, uh, you know, prior to going in and you got to go in firm. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at a condo in CO1 right now, let's just say financial district somewhere around Bisha right now, 55 years there, let's just say, you're going to be in a good spot to be purchasing because there's a lot of inventory. As a matter of fact, I was yeah. looking. And that goes to, like, that's what I was trying yeah. to say. The 18,000 sales means nothing if you don't know how active much, uh, sorry, active listings means nothing if you don't know how much of that is being absorbed. Yeah. So if all 18,000 are going, that means there's exact amount of buyers for the amount of listings. It's still not a great situation. Yeah. But right now we have 18,000 uh, listings and not as many buyers. Yeah. So it is a good time and you do yeah. have, you are in the driver's seat. And To be more specific, when we talk about, you got to look at the type of property. We mm -hmm. were looking, actually, you and I were looking at, uh, again, uh, waterfront condos area. So CO1 going from Bathurst to Spadina, All the way, to yeah. uh, Lake Shore. And we were being very specific. One bedroom plus den. Oh my God, yeah, that's and traumatic. And we're talking about first week of May. Uh, May. Mm -hmm. There was 229 one bedroom plus dens on the Active market. Active to pick from. Yeah. And there was over uh, 400 one bedrooms, but we're talking about one bedroom plus thing. Yeah. So 229 the out average, of those yeah. in the last month, there was only about, what was it? 50 of them that were sold, mm -hmm. 49 of them that were sold. And they were all under 700. That, yeah. Well, not they were all, but the average price the average was, was under 700. Yeah. So that goes to show. So if you are in the market for one bedroom uh, plus then in a CO1, You are in, this is a buyer's market. Yeah, in that pocket. Yeah, because there was 4.6 yeah. uh, months. Over four months of inventory. Yeah, four and a half months of inventory. Yeah. So if you want to be buying there, you're in a good situation. One, two. You're in a great you situation. Can, yeah. You're in a good situation. You're, you're in a great, great situation. situation. Yeah. And this is where you want to be purchasing because options are there. You can negotiate. You can have uh, your timelines of due diligence periods with your five-day financing. I, those, I miss those days. Yeah, you can do your financing. Yeah. You can have your status certificate reviewed by a lawyer. You're not and, rushed. Yeah, you're not rushed. You can actually sit down and make plans. If you are a seller, on the other hand, majority of these condos are cookie cutter. I would say like 90% of 99% of them are cookie cutter condos. So for you to differentiate, you got two things. First, you got to have a location. If you're in a good building, whatever it is, or you got a nice view that yeah. will set you apart. But other than that, you got to be priced well and you got to be presenting well. Yeah. Same. So there is no realistically, you know, if you're looking for a one bedroom plus 10 in one condo that there's like five other listed. Mm -hmm. So the only way to differentiate is you got to be The Price best well, priced, yeah. And you got to look well. What else can we do? Nothing. Price really, for me, I'm going to be really honest and people are not going to like what I have to say as usual, but it's always price. Yeah. You can even not look good. If you're priced well, yeah. you will sell. 
Yeah. You will sell. But not to its potential. You not may not get a lot of sell. activity. Yeah, not to its potential. Yeah. No, not to its potential, but yeah. you will sell. But you sell. can sell, sell, yeah. So. So that's that's it. I mean, realistically, like. That's a wrap. This, that's a wrap for this one. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, like, again, uh, month of April, like right now, four months into the year. Yeah. Um, again, we'll see what happens in June. Let's talk about uh, interest rates. Let's talk about what we think it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I don't I, even know anymore, to be honest. And I'm realistically, tired of this guessing game. Yeah, and realistically, <laughs> I don't even see if the interest rate was to go down in June would How make a huge impact because uh, 0.25. What is it got? What is that gonna do right now in this market? Nothing. Um, I like to see a lot of activity, but I don't see that happening. I feel like a lot of buyers are even tapped out in terms of paying their own mortgages. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't see that happening. But I hope. Uh, I think <clears> first-time <throat> home buyers are <coughs> are the ones benefiting right now because there are a lot like there's a lot of incentives for them right yeah. now, right? So that's kind of offsetting certain other things that are happening. Yeah. Who's really getting hit is the investors because the capital gains tax and there's like the price. There's just so many factors for them. But if you're a first time home buyer in the downtown core right now, you are winning. Yeah, you are winning. Calling all first time home buyers in yeah. the one bedroom, one bedroom plus downtown right now. So that's actually uh, one get th- in. That, that was another thing I wanted to uh, mention. So back in March of uh, 2022. So sorry, what March? March of 2022. Is that the interest rates went down slightly? No. No. So yeah, March is when they started to raise the interest rate. Okay. Yeah, raise, raise, or they raise. went. Two years just flew by, and yeah. I don't know what date is yeah. anymore. So when did they go down? When I was looking at the chart and I couldn't identify. This is a real question. But they the went down. Uh, that was they went in, down uh, slightly. When that was in March, March of 2020. In COVID. They haven't went down in two years zero. They went, they went, they no. held, they had held. No, 2020, they reduced the interest rates because of yes. COVID. Yeah. In 2022, they started raising the interest yeah, rates. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. But then they had held. There was one month that they had held. There was something that happened and the prices went crazy. That was April and May last year. 23, 23 not 22. Yeah. No, it was 23. That's what I wanted to But say. what I'm looking at right now, yeah. we're talking about um, um, going back to the first time home is now being a yeah. good time. So if... We're looking at condo market back in uh, March of 2022, which was the peak for the condo market. Mm-hmm. The average condo was selling for 831000 Now, fast forward to March of 2020. And everyone thought it was such a good idea to buy then, I remember. Right now, we're at March of 2024. We're sitting at seven twenty nine. That's $100,000 less savings in an average price in a condo. So, And you can't tell me that you're going to pay all of that in that three-year mortgage. Like, no. You're not. No. So, so realistically, again, if you were to buy the same condo, hundred thousand, now would be the time to yeah. do it. Uh, I personally don't think um, the condo prices are going to come down more than could this. Get hit more than this. I agree, but because um, there is a pretty good demand, like I, I'm seeing like crazy stuff. I mm-hmm. saw a brand new condo assignment across Downs View Park again. Two bedroom with parking and locker. 480,000 oh, brand new, like stuff like this yeah. doesn't exist. By the way, this is from our assignment group. So I got to plug, plug this in. Nikki, I need some sort of animation up here saying WhatsApp group. So if anyone wants to join, please message us um, directly. You'll get Nima's midnight texts. <laughs> yeah, you're going <laughs> to get some text messages coming. We try to send out handpicked messages. Yes, yes. Uh, only. We not try. Deals. We only send Yeah, we them. only send handpicked deals out to that group. And mm-hmm. we've done plenty of uh, deals. I was actually thinking of, you know, doing, uh, sending out the deals that we've done uh, for the clients through that. Yeah, um, let's do uh, it. Through that group. Because uh, people are getting amazing deals. So like that deal, the two bedroom with parking unlock that I'm telling you about brand new unit was sent to that group. And one of the clients we had jumped Snagged on it. it jumped on it yeah anyways anything else we got to talk about capital gains tax yeah you want to dive like a little deeper I sure so think. let's talk about the capital gains tax so yeah. um that i'm gonna read what it came is. into effect Effective june 25th 2024 government a uh, canadian government will increase the capital gains tax inclusion rate from 50 percent to 66.67 percent on property and investment gains how fun is that Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. People have actually panic sold from this. I've actually secured my client in a great building, what I thought was great value. So not a hot deal, but great value because of this. And we snagged it because we were able, not even just because of price, 
we were able to really meet that before June 25th deadline. And okay. that was the most important thing to the seller. So that is really affecting the way people are thinking about real estate right now. It's it's true. And, and it's negative. Trying, yeah. It's not positive. Yeah. No, it's, huh. it's not. I mean, like if you're buying, it's good for you. Yes. And um, one thing I need to add But some is people, that some investors are actually factoring that into 100%. the fact that maybe it's not a good time to buy an investment property because of this. Well, I feel like we're going to have a shortage of rentals. Let's go into that after this because I want to just add this. Okay. The um, So the capital gains tax is 67%. If we'll call it, it 67, under, yeah. Yes. What was that? 66.67, yeah. Oh, yeah. 66.67. Or 67%. Yeah. Um, if it's uh, under uh, personal name, up to 250000 the first one hundred fifty thousand is under the fifty percent, so under the yes. old rule. After it's that, tiered. it goes. Yeah, it goes into the sixty uh, six point six seven. Yeah, the difference. And then, but if it's a corporation, you don't have that exemption for the first two hundred fifty thousand. It just jumps up to that, mm-hmm. you know, sixty seven percent. So, with that being said, well, right now the effect of that, what do you think the long term effect of this capital gains tax, the increase in it, would be on the rental market? On the rental market, you know what's interesting. I think people are going to have like a buy and hold approach if they have been sold now. So really, really long term real estate games so is what they're going to look the, at. That will bring the supply down because yeah. people are not going to be selling. There's not going to be enough. Uh, supply people are going to find market. ways to hold their property yeah. as long as possible and until two, that retirement plan. Yeah. You know, and two, I think because people see there is no incentive to uh, invest anymore. Amount of investors that were investing into buying these brand new condos and renting them out are not going to happen. It's going to go more to like people that are actually purchasing and moving in. So the rental pool, I feel like it's going to shrink in the next few years. And that's only going to drive up the prices for rent. So I don't know. It's an interesting time. Yeah, I don't don't know what the long term effects of this would be. I mean, clearly they had a huge... um, uh, number that it will increase the revenue for the government. But with that being said, it's not all about that. It's about the fact that people need a place to live. So yeah. with um, higher taxes, less people are investing in rental. So we'll see how that will, uh, will affect the market. Long-term. And that's about it, I think. Do you want to talk about the um, first time homebuyer program that changed quite a bit? You talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the first time home buyer, this is basically what happened. Effective August 1st, 2024, the home buyer's plan, the HBP limit increased from 35,000 to 60,000. So quite the increase, which is nice. And this is specifically for first time home buyers, just so that everybody knows. Okay. First home savings account contribution up to 8,000 per year and up to a lifetime limit of 40,000. And then the 25 year amortization is extended to 30 years for insured mortgages on newly built homes. Let's talk about that. You're welcome. That means you only got to buy a brand new pre-construction to be able to qualify for 30-year mortgage. Yeah. Was there a price limit on that? Not that I see, no. Okay. But who buys brand new pre-construction as a first-time home buyer? Who buys? Yeah. Like, I'm just wondering who's like, if who someone... buys is somebody who doesn't have the down payment right away, but they want to get into the market and they understand that prices are on the rise over the next, you know. So you heard it. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, who buys. But the whole thing is, will this be in effect four years down the road? I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, like, imagine if you know. buy hoping this happens. I'm hoping this happens. Maybe you'll get grandfathered. So many changes, water tax, this tax, heat tax. I don't even know. I can't keep up anymore. Yeah. So, I mean... Anything else that was added? No, that's really the only things that I wanted buyers to understand and know that they can have options, um, especially first time home buyers. Beautiful. Yeah. So, guys. This is really for first time home buyers. We yeah. told you where, we told you what, we told you how. So, we're going to call this um, episode First Time Home Buyers 101. Yeah. And uh, whatever you need to know about the first time home buying, call us. Yeah, give us a call. Uh, before doing that, make sure you pre-approved. That's the reality of, of it. Of course. Guys, thanks for watching. Guys, make sure to watch the last episode of NK Real Talk. We talked about short-term rentals and long-term rentals. And, uh, you know, benefits of each and why one should consider 
each situation. Yeah. Um, that's really good for those investors looking to buy a rental place and either do a short term or what long term and it. what the backup plans for each one would be. Make sure to watch that and yeah. we'll see you next time. Have a great Have day. Have a good one, guys.